In a language like C-sharp, there are a bunch of different operators divided into different categories, such as arithmetic operators, assignment operators, increment and decrement operators, relational operators, logical operators, etc. So these are different categories, and we learn all of them to write a logical program or program that does calculation. But we don't learn all the categories at the same time. Some of them are associated with other things. For example, relational and logical operators are associated with if statements. So we learn all the categories when the time is right. We learn relational and logical operators when we'll be discussing if statements. Today's lecture is about arithmetic operators. In this category, we have common operators, and you know most of them from mathematics, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You know all these. Except these common operators, we have another operator which is called modulus. Modulus can be something new to you if you didn't figure out previously. But don't worry, we will discuss this operator and learn to code it. The sign of the addition is normal, the plus sign. The sign of the subtraction is minus sign. Multiplication sign is asterisk. And division sign is forward slash. Now have a look at the example. I have two numbers. And here we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Simple. So these operators are very simple. And we use them as we do in mathematics. Only for division, there is something special that you need to know and remember. It's called integer division. Integer division results in integer. So whenever you divide two integer numbers, that means you are performing integer division. And integer division, like I said earlier, returns the integer part of the decision. So the output of this statement would be 3, not 3.33. So in reality, that would be the actual result, 3.33. As we are doing the integer division, as you can see, both the values are integers, whole numbers. That's why we get the integer part of the result. Let me show you the result in the cancel. Now you see the output, only the integer part is written, right? So you can have integer division if you only need a whole number result, only the integer part of the result. If you, however, want to get a complete decimal result from the integer division, then you need to at least convert one value to floating point. And you can do that in several different ways. For example, instead of integer 3, I can put a decimal dot zero decimal zero now the result of this statement would be 3.33 and that's why we need to change our data type to double let me show you the output and now you see a complete result right 3.33 and if you don't want to put the decimal point zero you can perform a type casting to double and to do that, before the value, you want to typecast, you will write the type in the parenthesis. And you only need to typecast only one value. The program will work. Let's run the application and see the output. Right? There you see the same result. So that was integer division. So don't forget it. Right? It's an important thing. And it helps you to comprehend modulus. So let's talk about it. Modulus is a very useful and wonderful operator. You can do amazing things with it. The sign of modulus is percent sign, but it has nothing to do with the percent. So what does it do? Modulus gives the remainder of integer division. Listen once again and pay attention. Modulus gives the remainder of integer division that means modulus does division integer division and it returns the remainder let me make it further simple with the help of this image so what do we have here we have division 
what type of division integer division so when we have integer division there will always be two things we get in the result number one is quotient because 7 goes three times of 2 but the 7 is not completely divisible by 2 so we get a remainder so that remainder value is returned by the modulus operator now let's suppose if I had number 8 so in that case 8 is completely divisible by 2 so the quotient would have been 4 and remainder 0 so when we use modulus it does integer division and returns remainder so let's write some code I show you several useful examples In the first example I am solving this one so we get the quotient using integer division and here we get the result 3 quotient 3 but here I am using modulus there will also be integer division but the result won't be quotient the result is remainder so let's print both the variables in the cancel to see if you are getting the right result Now here is the output. Quotient is 3 and remainder is 1. I hope you understood modulus. So let me show you some more examples. Let's say you are given a time in minutes, 150 minutes. And you are told to convert this time in minutes into hours and minutes. So how would you do that? You will use integer division and modulus. Have a look. So here we get the hours. In 150 minutes, we have two complete hours. And 60 minutes equals one hour. So 150 divided by 60. In tier division, we get the result two. After two whole hours, we have some remaining minutes. So how do we get the minutes? With the help of modulus. In tier division, but this time the result is remainder, 30. So 150 minutes equals two hours and 30 minutes. So let's print it out in the cancel. Run the application. And here we have our output 150 minutes equals 2 hours and 30 minutes let's have another example the same way you are giving number of months right like 28 months and you want to find out the years and the months so you get the years using simple integer division So 28 months equals 2 years and 4 months. Let me print it. And here I see 28 months equals two years and four months you see modulus is very interesting and there are so many places where we use this operator now what will happen if i say total number of months is 12 12 is completely divisible by 12 here we get the answer 1 and 12 is divisible by 12 so there is no remainder 0 now see 
12 months equals 1 year and 0 months. Let me show you. You will see 12 months equals 1 year and 0 months. And what if you have only 6 months? In teacher division, 0 because 12 is greater than the 6. In this case, the answer would be 6 because 6 is smaller than 12. There wouldn't be any integer division and number 6 is returned as remainder. Let me show you the output. Let's say 6 months equals 0 year and 6 months. Right? One last example. In number systems, we have even and odd numbers. So how do you write a program that tells you the number is even or odd? An even number is completely divisible by 2. Completely divisible means the remainder must be 0. So after division, we need to check the remainder to find out if the number is even or not. So in a program, you can write, let's say the number is 12 modulus 2. So if you get 0, that means the number is even. And you will get it here, because 12 is completely divisible by 2. And if I change 12 to 15, the remainder would be 1. So if I check this variable, I can easily find out the number is even or odd. So listeners, in this chapter, we learn to use arithmetic operators. And we learn more operators in our coming lectures. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.